Hello there, brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus. It's me, Brother Henry. And I'm at Target in Inglewood. And uh, I'm on this uh, GoPro Hero 4 Black that I've been using. And I'm going to be trying a different uh, setup here on myself. I'll show you what I've been using. Use this on my last video, which I kind of used with a different camera SJ4000 I used to have before. It's a band that I've made using uh, different things here. And you just put it around your wrist, but it's too hard to aim. And you can see that in the last video that I made, uh, LBC in Long Beach. So I've come up with a different idea so I can have more of a hands-free thing. And I bought this belt. I usually wear shirts that are, you know, untucked in. So I got this utility belt, Klein Tools, and I'll be able to attach it to uh, this nylon outside belt here. And that way I can have hands-free uh, video. So I just wanted to share that. So we'll see how this works. And I'm going to be giving a message on judgment over here. As you can see, I don't know why, but the lights are out over there. So I might have to get like a little external light. And I will be using my external mic, of course. Uh, but the one good thing about this target is it's open till midnight so that's gonna work for me so I'll just uh, be out there preaching so let me get ready and then I'll uh, turn this off and get it back on again goodbye I'm out to give a message tonight about judgment and God's Word. And I gathered some parables that uh, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ wrote in uh, St. Matthew. One of the parable of the weeds. And then Jesus explains the parable of the weeds. And also some other things, the parable of the net. But I wanted to come out to edify you in the Word of God. I'm a born-again Christian. Come out and proclaim God's Word in a lot of different places. And uh, this comes from Matthew 13, 24 through 30, the parable of the weeds. And this deals with judgment, the judgment day. Jesus told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like this. A man sowed good seed in his field. One night, when everyone was asleep, an enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and then went away. When the plants grew and the heads of grain began to form, then the weeds showed up. The man's servants came to him and said, Sir, it was good seed you sowed in our field. Where did the weeds come from? It was some enemy that did this, he answered. Do you want us to go and pull up the weeds? They asked him. He said, No, because as you gather the weeds, you might pull up some of the wheat along with them. Let the wheat and the weeds both grow together until the harvest. 
Then I will tell the harvest workers to pull up the weeds first. Did you hear that? Pull up the weeds first. You, you need to remember that. Tie them in bundles and burn them. And then to gather in the wheat and put it in my barn. This was the parable of the weeds. Now in the same chapter of Matthew, St. Matthew of God's Holy Word, 36 through 43, Jesus explains the parable of the weeds. When Jesus had left the crowd and gone indoors, his disciples came to him and said, Tell us what the parable about the weeds in the field means. Jesus answered, The man who sowed the good seed is the Son of Man. That's Jesus. The field is the world. The good seed is the people who belong to the kingdom. The weeds are the people who belong to the evil one. Which one are you? And the enemy who sowed the bad weed seeds is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age. And the harvest workers are angels. We'll get to Matthew 24 later about what the angels do at the four corners of the earth. Just as the weeds are gathered up and burned in the fire, so the same thing will happen at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send out His angels to gather up out of His kingdom all those who cause people to sin and all others who do evil things. So God deals with the evil people first. And they will throw them into the fiery furnace. That's the angels. It says it right here. Where they will cry and gnash their teeth. And I know that's forever. Then God's people will shine like the sun in their Father's kingdom. Listen then if you have ears. That's what's going to happen. God already predicted what's going to happen at the end. That's judgment day. Now let's go to the parable of the net, Matthew 13, same, same chapter, but 47 through 50. Also, the kingdom of heaven is like this. Some fishermen throw their net out into the lake and catch all kinds of fish. When the net is full, they pull it to shore and sit down and divide the fish. The good ones go into the buckets, the worthless ones are thrown away. It will be like this at the end of the age. The angels will go out and gather up the evil people, see, first, from among the good, and will throw them into the fiery furnace where they will cry and gnash their teeth. You need to think about this. Jesus said, unless you're born again, you will not enter the kingdom of God. So you're either a child of God or a child of the devil. And no one knows the day or the hour, God says. Now we're going to go to Matthew 24. This is very important. You need to read God's Word every day. Man doesn't live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. No one knows, however, when that day and hour will come. Neither the angels in heaven nor the Son. Jesus doesn't even know. The Father alone knows. The coming of the Son of Man will be like what had happened in the time of Noah. Do you remember that story? In the days before the flood, people ate and drank. Men and women married. Up to the very day Noah went into the boat. Yet they did not realize what was happening until the flood came and swept them all away. They, were, they all perished. That is how it will be when the Son of Man comes. At that time, two men will be working in a field. One will be taken away. The other will be left behind. The one that's taken away will be taken away by an angel. Two women will be at the mill grinding meal. One will be taken away. The other one will be left behind. I hope you're not going to be left behind. Watch out then, because you do not know what day 
your Lord will come. If the owner of the house knew the time when the thief would come, you can be sure that he would stay awake and not let the thief break into his house. So then, you also must always be ready because the Son of Man, Jesus, God the Son, will come at an hour when you are not expecting Him. If you're lost and dead in your trespasses and you don't accept God's rules, would say you must be born again in, it, in order to enter the kingdom of God, that day will come like a thief in the night. Saints are already protected. But those who are sinners will not know when that hour comes when they take their last breath. And there's many ways of dying. You can get into a car accident. All of a sudden, it's lights out in London. You, if the, the ambulance goes away with no lights and sirens on. It means you're dead. Okay? That happens. You can have a heart attack tonight. Oh, I hope that that doesn't happen and that you uh, listen to God's Word as I preach to you, preach to your hardened hearts, and receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Repent of your sins. I can't say that enough. But there's all kinds of different ways of dying. 150,000 people die every day in a 24-hour period. It happens all kinds of different ways. Aneurysm, uh, murdered, like I said, heart attack. All kinds of different ways. All of a sudden it happens. All of a sudden you're, you, you appear before the judgment seat of Christ. It's appointed once unto man to die and then after that the judgment. Praise God. Yes, sir. Oh, oh, no, 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 thanks. Uh, just bless me. Hey, but bless you, man, because, you know, like I was telling her, whenever you see a man of God speaking in the streets, he's not some crazy guy. Yeah. God speaks to people. Yeah. And sometimes he puts people in certain places. He, he told me to come here tonight. Yeah, I think I need to be here tonight. Okay, praise God. Huh? I think the Lord for sending you. Praise God. God bless you, brother. Hey, and help me out, man. Uh, do the same thing somewhere else. <laughs> You're appointed. <laughs> Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Today we're living in a day and age when people don't want to hear God's Word. This man was uh, complimenting the preaching of the Gospel. But I'm on the other side of the track tonight, and it seems that people are more apt to uh, lend a, uh, an ear to hearing the, go the Gospel. But on the other side, where the rich people are, oh, I'll get cussed out. Oh, they'll yell at me. They'll tell me to leave. But uh, that's another story. Now let's uh, continue with the uh, flood that Jesus was talking about. Genesis uh, 7, 11, 16. We're going all the way back. When Noah was 600 years old, on the 17th day of the second month, all the outlets of the vast body of water beneath the earth burst open. All the floodgates of the sky were opened. And the rain fell on the earth for 40 days and nights. It never had rained before. Ever. Up until this day. On that day, Noah and his wife went into the boat with their three sons, and their wives. With them went every kind of animal, domestic and wild, large and small, and every kind of bird. A male and a female of each kind of living being went into the boat with Noah, as God had commanded. Then the Lord shut the door behind Noah. Everyone else was outside as it rained, and he didn't realize what was going on. And like Jesus said before, when I was reading, earlier in Matthew 24, yet they did not realize what was happening until the flood came and swept them all away. They all perished, except for Noah, his wife, and his sons and wives, and the 
the pairs of animals and birds. Now I want to skip to Genesis 19. You probably all read about Sodom and Gomorrah, what had happened there, it was some pretty evil things that were happening. Lot leaves Sodom. These were two angels that came to rescue Lot and his family. God had already talked to Abraham about destroying Sodom and Gomorrah. The two men, or the angels, said to Lot, If you have anyone else here, sons, daughters, sons-in-law, or any other relatives living in the city, get them out of here because we are going to destroy this place. That's what the angels of God said. We're going to destroy this place. Serious. The Lord has heard the terrible accusations against these people and has sent us to destroy Sodom. There's all kinds of homosexual activity going on there. Who knows what else? We know that they tried, tried to uh, tell, tell Lot to have the angels come out so that they could uh, have relations with them. But the angels struck them blind and they didn't know what was going on. So they were wandering around in the dark just before God destroyed Sodom. Anyways, it says, Then Lot went to the men that his daughters were going to marry and said, Hurry up and get out of here. The Lord is going to destroy this place. But they thought he was joking. I wonder if that'll happen uh, in the end times. Just before the Lord comes and, and uh, messengers of God will warn people about the sudden destruction that will come. At dawn, the angels tried to make Lot hurry. Quick, they said. Take your wife and your two daughters and get out so that you will not lose your lives when the city is destroyed. But Lot hesitated. He procrastinated. The Lord, however, had pity on him, so the men, or the angels, took him, his wife, and his two daughters by the hand and led them out of the city. God is compassionate and full of mercy and love. Yes. Then one of the angels said, Run for your lives. Don't look back and don't stop in the valley. Run to the hills so that you will not be killed. Oh, it must have been uh, a devastating blow that God put on this city. Well, here, let me, uh, let me read a little more. But Lot answered, No, please, don't make us do that, sir. You have done me a great favor and saved my life. But the hills are too far away. The disaster will overtake me. And I will die before I get there. So do you see that little town? It is near enough. Let me go there. You can see it. It's just a small place and I will be safe. The angel said, all right, I agree. I won't destroy that town. I don't know how far that little town was from Sodom. But he agreed and he said, okay, run. I can't do anything until you get there. Because Lot called it small, the town was named Zor. Okay, so now I'm going to read the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah. This is all pertinent to the end times because Jesus talks about the flood and the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah, how it will be when he comes. The sun was rising, dawn, when Lot reached Zor, the little town I was talking about. Suddenly the Lord rained burning sulfur on the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah and destroyed them and the whole valley along with all the people there, everyone, and everything that grew on the land. But Lot's wife looked back and was turned into a pillar of salt. God told angels to tell them not to, to look back. 
till the whole place was destroyed. Early the next morning, Abraham hurried to the place where he had stood in the presence of the Lord. He looked down at Sodom and Gomorrah and the whole valley and saw smoke rising from the land, like smoke from a huge furnace. But when God destroyed the cities of the valley where Lot was living, he kept Abraham in mind and allowed Lot to escape safely. Like I said, God is merciful, kind, and loving. Don't take that for granted. Don't take His lo love and His mercy and kindness for granted. Now we're, I'm skipping to Matthew 25, 31 through 34. St. Matthew, the Gospel. The final judgment. Some of you that have been listening about what I've been talking about with Noah and the flood and Sodom and Gomorrah and the fire and, and brimstone destruction. You'll see what I'm talking about. When the Son of Man or Jesus comes as King, and He will, and all the angels with Him, He will sit on His royal throne, and the people of all nations will be gathered before Him. Then he will divide them into groups, just as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. Sheep will be his righteous saints and the goats will be lawless sinners. Those that reject the Gospel of Christ. Those that reject Jesus. Those are the goats. He will put the righteous people at his right. <coughs> and prepared for you ever since the creation of the world. I was hungry and you fed me, thirsty and you gave me drink. I was a stranger and you received me in your homes, naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you took care of me. In prison you visited me. The righteous will then answer him, when, Lord, did we ever see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you drink? When did we ever see you a stranger and welcome you into our homes? Naked and clothe you? When did we ever see you sick or in prison and visit you? The King, Jesus, will reply, I tell you, whenever you did this for one of the least important of these followers of mine, you did it for me. Oh, the last will be first and the first will be last. If you're fill, filled with pride, you will be humble. Humbled. If you're humble, you will be exalted. Then he will say to those on his left, the goats, away from me, you that are under God's curse, away to the eternal fire which has been prepared for the devil and his angels. I was hungry, but you would not feed me. Thirsty, but you would not give me drink. I was a stranger, but you would not welcome me, welcome me into your homes. Naked, but you did not clothe me. I was sick and in prison and you would not take care of me. Then they, the goats, will answer him, when, Lord, did we ever see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and we would not help you? The King, Jesus, will reply, I tell you, whenever you refuse to help one of these least important ones, you refuse to help me. These then will be sent off to eternal punishment, but the righteous will go to eternal life. The others at his left. Then the king will say to the people on his right, Come you that are blessed by my Father. Come and possess the kingdom which has been given to you. Now I'm skipping to Paul's letter to the Thessalonians, the second book, right in the beginning, 3 through 12, the judgment at Christ's coming. Our friends, we must thank God at all times for you. It is right for us to do so because your faith is growing so much. He's talking to the saints, other believers in Christ, and the love each of you has for the others is becoming greater. That is why we ourselves boast about you 
in the churches of God. We boast about the way you continue to endure and believe through all the persecutions and sufferings you are experiencing. We all do, but we have faith and we hold on to God. We have hope in Christ. And He gets us through it. All of this proves that God's judgment is just and as a result you will become worthy of his kingdom in heaven for which you are suffering. God will do what is right. He will bring suffering on those who make you suffer. And he will give relief to you who suffer and to us as well. He will do this when the Lord Jesus appears from heaven with a flaming fire to punish those who reject God and do not obey the good news about our Lord Jesus. It's like I said before, the weeds get uh, bundled up and burned and the bad fish get discarded. Same thing. The evil people get dealt with first. I'm going to read that again. He's going to come with his, with his mighty angels with a flaming fire to punish those who reject God, is that you? And who do not obey the good news about our Lord Jesus. Is that you? Just saying you believe is not good enough. The demons believe and they tremble. God bless you, sir. If you believe, you will obey Jesus. Everything that is in his gospel. If you love me, you'll keep my commandments, he says. He who has my commandments and keeps them is the one who loves me. Do you keep his commandments? It's important. Those uh, uh, that are going to be punished by God, they will suffer the punishment of eternal destruction, separated from the presence of the Lord and from his glorious might when he comes on that day to receive glory from all his people, the saints, the righteous ones, and honor from all who believe. I believe. I, want, I implore you to believe too. If you have a, a problem with sin, Jesus can deliver you from that sin and make you a righteous, holy, upstanding man or woman of God. You too will be among them because you have believed the message that we told you. That is why we always pray for you, Paul says. We ask our God to make you worthy of the life he has called you to live. May he fulfill by his power all your desire for goodness and complete your work of faith. In this way, the name of our Lord Jesus Christ will receive glory from you and you from him by the grace of our God and of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now I'm going to, to the great white throne judgment. Oh, there's a judgment day before that. When you take your last breath, that's judgment day. Could be judgment night too. But let's go to the great white throne judgment talked about in Revelations 20, 11 through 15. The final judgment. Here it is. Then I saw a great white throne and the one who sits on it. Earth and heaven fled away from his presence and were seen no more. And I saw the dead, great and small alike standing before the throne. Those were those that died in their sins. The goats. Books were opened. And then another book was opened. The book of the living. The dead were judged according to what they had done as recorded in the books. Did you know that for every idle word that you speak, you'll give an account of it on the day of judgment? Every word, everything you've thought, everything you've done, doesn't get swept under the carpet. Doesn't get swept under the rug. You have to give an account of everything you've done. Unless you're saved by the blood of Christ. 
The dead were judged according to what they had done and as recorded in the books. Then the sea gave up its dead. Death and the world of the dead also gave up the dead they held. And all were judged according to what they had done. Then death and the world of the dead were thrown into the lake of fire. This lake of fire is the second death. See, there's hell. If you die in your sins, you go to hell. And then the second death is where you will go with the devil and his angels in the lake of fire. Those who did not have their name written in the book of the living were thrown in the lake of fire. I don't want that to be you. You have a way out. You must listen to this. John 3.18 those who believe in the Son are not judged, but those who do not believe have already been judged. I'm not judging you. You just need to listen to what I just said. Because they have not believed in God's only Son. But you need to hear that to be edified to know. That's why I'm here. And you have a way out. John 5, 24, St. John, I am telling you the truth. Those who hear my words and believe in him who sent me has eternal life. They will not be judged, but have already passed from death to life. So if you're uh, a born-again Christian, you're not going to be judged. Judgment is, is hell. You can escape the wrath to come by believing in Christ. Jesus says, unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. Perish means e eternal doom, destruction, damned forever in hell, where there's no hope, not a drop of water, no light, nothing, no air. All the good things you took for granted here are not down there. Nothing. You get nothing. It, it, it just... Uh, weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth where the worm dieth not and the fire is never quenched forever and ever and ever eternal destruction and doom like I said you can sidestep being judged you can sidestep not having to go to hell for all eternity but you have to repent of all those things you've done you have to let God clean you and wash you you can experience forgiveness, be forgiven for everything you've done, every evil thought, everything. Oh, there's a lot of skeletons in your closets. I know. You don't want them to be dragged out on Judgment Day. You want to have a new heart and, and walk in forgiveness, walk in the light, and, and a cling to what is good and abhor what is evil. No longer being a child of the devil, but being a child of Jesus Christ, God the Son, He rose from the dead to deliver you from your sin. Well, that's my message tonight for you, people. Hope you're edified.
Well, it wasn't aimed right when I had it right side up, so I had to put it upside down. Otherwise, it would have been pointing more towards the ground. So, right now, right now I'm right side up, but the video was upside down, so anyways, you're not going to know that because I'll have to fix that later in editing. God's word is powerful. Just, uh, you know, I've seen this many times before. You say the, the right thing at the right time, and people walk right by you as you happen to say something, and, and they know it's from them. It's just, it goes right to their bones. They can, I know they can feel it. They're humbled as they hear the word of God. It's just so powerful. Anyways. Praise God, and this ends this little event here at Target in Inglewood on Century. As you can see where I'm parked. Parked near Foot Locker. Okay, praise God. Bye-bye.